This is how I'm gonna spend my vacation money going forward, period. Oh, it's been, it's been amazing. I have really had a great time here. This place is, is wonderful. Uh, everyone here is so friendly. The food's been amazing, incredible venue, um, so beautiful here. The people and the training and the food, it's phenomenal. From every aspect of the community, the food, the training, the world-class jiu-jitsu, the dojo is nice. Ah, uh, yeah, there's absolutely no reason to be intimidated. I'm 56-year-old blue belt, uh, and I mean, I think everybody here had better jiu-jitsu than me, but it didn't matter. Uh, this is not my first jiu-jitsu camp, but my first one here, and I definitely plan to come back. Uh, something very cool happens when we all get together, small group, small group training, the instructors walked by in passing and said a sentence that fixed my, uh, my, my cross-collar chokes that I've been struggling with for years. So the instruction is immaculate. This is uh, a whole, whole nother level compared to what I've been able to experience before. Uh, yeah, you need to experience this. It's uh, really something else. Um, that this is not the worst position. It's bad, but you can't, there's a way out. You can definitely get out of this position. So let's do a trap and roll where we're going to break down the arm. And back in the day, I used to just kind of hold it right here. But it's much better if you can pull it across, right? So we're almost leading him into a shoulder roll. Okay. Then we block something on this side. I block his arm, so I'm going to block this, this foot now. Grab behind the armpit, just bridge up and over. It doesn't take a lot of power. And then we are in our guard. Okay, let's do it together. You know, and you don't have to break it down like that. Sometimes you can just like pull it across. You just need to get this across their body. So, but typically I teach breaking it down. One hand goes behind the tricep, the other on the wrist. If you can pull this across your body, that's gonna be better, right? So we're leading them in. Let me show you a couple like common things with the, with the, with the bridge. People bridge up and then they, br and then they go down, right? They're not really cutting an angle. You want to break this down, bring it across, just real, real subtle. My, my heel goes from inside to outside of this angle. Then you just bridge up. You can even do a slow motion. And then come around, block, push your way back up. I mean, that's that's good. Sometimes I let people mount me. It's like it's too much work to really fight them. They mount me, and then when they when they least expect it, you just tip them over, bring it across. So he's almost doing a shoulder roll right here. You can grip behind for more security. My instructor also adds a side crunch, so you're blocking the knee. You know, not every technique needs to have every aspect optimized. You just need enough to have it be effective. And then just do like a little, it's more about tipping than exploding up into position, okay? So basic trap and roll with your partners. One, two, three. To do any more work, once they've reached that tipping point, gravity takes over. That was a big realization, like, oh, my effort can stop once gravity takes over. All right, now this is one of my favorite mount escapes. Um, Let's say we, we are able to trap the arm. I break it down, I pull it across. I'm able to trap the arm, but I'm not, I don't trap this very well, right? So he puts his leg out. As I bridge, he puts his leg out for just a little, yeah. And then I pass that off to my elbow and knee. There's the gap. You know, I try to, I try to bridge, he, he, that goes out. I br bring my shin under. Sometimes you hold it with the elbow, you bring your knee under. Okay, so this is, this is an opening. Sometimes you can go back to, to close guard and complete the escape. If I get this underneath, I like to lift. I like to lift this up. Now, I capture his heel, and I'm gonna push him back 45 degrees. Not straight back, but 45 degrees toward the corner of the room. I push with my shin, I pull with my heel, and this other hand pushes on his floating ribs. Now we're in a great footlock position. 
and you'll learn more about that this afternoon. <laughs> so in a way, you don't have to put all your effort into that bridge and roll. In fact, you get apathetic, like, yeah, I hope this works. It's cool if it works, but if he slips that out, then that's fine. Then I just come in with the shin. Li again, lift up. If his foot is in contact with the mat, he's going to be really heavy. He's going to be able to step over that push that down okay and now he knows that trick that I might do so let's continue to break this down bring it to the other side I might try to trap it he escapes it get your elbow underneath feed it to the shin lift up don't let that foot come in contact with the mat I throw him 45 degrees to the corner and the other hand pushes on the floating ribs and then we can fit into our foot lock position okay so let's work on that Bridge into shin sweep. One, two, three. Okay, let's do one more mount escape. And this is not really commonly taught, um, but I use it to, you know, I use it uh, quite often. So yeah, sometimes when their hips are on top of your hips, you can do a trap and roll, you can bridge them over. But sometimes that bridge isn't effective because they have a really, really high mount up in your, up here. So when I'm using my hips, I mean, I'm not going into anything, right? So I need to change the shape of my body. I need to get him up. I'm gonna put my hands in his armpit and swing, I want my, to bring my legs up. From this point, I can swing to the left, to, I mean, to the right, to the left, and you wanna gain some momentum here, and then you'll be able to tip them. I have to change the shape of my body. The rule in jujitsu is use what you've got. Whatever is free, you have to be able to generate momentum with that. So if they're really constrained in your upper body, now again, and this is different, like this is an arm lock. If my arms go straight up, but at this angle, this is not, this is not quite an arm lock, right? It's a, it's a, it's a weird angle. It's close to an arm lock, but not there. Then I swing up, I go left. You might, you might take a couple. It's not one, two, right? Separate movement with the legs. It's together. You have to, you have to generate that momentum from the legs being bound together. Okay, one more time. This is not for every mount situation. This is when they have high mount. Right, this, is, this isn't working, I can't, I, it's really difficult to reach that, that ankle. Then I come up, swing the legs, swing, swing, and now I'm back and going. Okay, let's play around with that. One, two, three. A few years ago, that, that technique is demonstrated on YouTube if you ever want it. It's a high <coughs> mount escape. Okay. Uh, Ben's on his back, let's go into the arm lock. I'd like to go into getting to the arm lock um, from side control. And one great way is to transition to north-south and then gather the arm. Okay, so this is, this is how you can kind of navigate around the body. We're starting in like a typical side control. I like to do this arm around his head first. And if I can lift this and get, start to get my arm underneath, that's great. Now I'm gonna have to move my knee from his hip so I get my arm in position, and then I go north-south. I try to be nice and not scrape his face with, with the gi or my hips or anything. So I elevate him slightly. And then I want to turn this corner. I turn my palm into me, get my wrist deep in his armpit, and then my shoulder drives forward. This is really good. The tighter that wrist is inside of his armpit, the more pressure he's going to feel. This is okay. But then when you sprawl at an angle, it's so much better. Then we can go to a, like a figure four. We'll start here and then take the kimura, okay? We'll end up in a straight arm lock, but for right now, let's work on the transition and feeding that kimura. So here we are, normal side control, standard. I reach with the, the top arm first, block his hip, north-south, palm up, right in the armpit, shoulder starts rolling forward, add a little sprawl, I gather a figure four, step over his arm, take the kimura. Okay, now let me show the opposite, opposite angle here. So, 
side control. Bring the arm over first. Then I block his hip so that my knee can move. North, south, I, I pull this in as deep as possible. If it's not deep and shallow, he'll just be able to escape that elbow. It's all about this elbow battle. Who has control? Get it deep in there, have your shoulder roll up. This is pretty good. But then when you add the sprawl, total body weight, it's, it's really powerful. Grab, go into your figure four. Get that arm out of the equation. Bring it up and over. You don't have to bring it out. I like to just pop it to the back and then do a little spiral. You know, so I have an, just a short-term goal. Just get it to the back. Just pop it over that. Okay, let me try it from that angle one more time. We're here. Top arm first, then bottom arm. North, south, go deep in the shoulder. If you can get the sprawl going, that's even better. Figure four, slide up, kill that arm up and over, spiral, take your Kimura. All right, guys, one, two, three. It is a little difficult to get great control uh, on this arm from back here. I'm sorry. No, you get from, from, from back here. So you can, um, you can have control here. Yeah, yeah. Boom. And you can, you can grab the belt, that's security. And then later you can, you can start to move your arm into position once you hit north south. You know, it depends on, on how secure you're feeling with this, with this opponent. You can also, some people are having difficulty getting underneath there because the elbow was at the shoulder, right? For me, I like to bring my elbow very close to his elbow. So I like to come out here, closer to block north, south. I gather, figure four. Now I slide my shin right into his back. I slide my shin and sit down leg over the face, pull back at a 45 degree angle. Then I can grab that wrist and fall back into a straight arm walk. So here, I first, this, this arm comes around, you can grab the belt for security, totally fine. Block the hip, I'm coming around the north south. I gather, I roll them up, I get the figure four. Now, you can, of course, jump into position and fall back. And that's kind of a, a beginner intermediate way of getting into it. But against a really skilled player, when you're jumping and falling back, they can use that momentum to go into a back roll. So you want to be able to transition without giving that much space. So that's why I'm just gonna slide my shin, windshield wipe it to the back of his, of his spine. Then this leg, this is a huge gap for an expert player. So I'm going to try to just sit as soon as I can. Now, I want this knee to come up, obviously, but I can work that out later. Bring it up. No hand change in this case. We go from figure four to sliding the elbow up to grab the wrist and take it. We do this side every time. We'll just go right to the. Yep, yep. So we got the figure four here. I like to slide my shin in and pivot. Slide and pivot. This is this is the the meat of the move right here. Then you can sit down. Side of my hamstring on his face. As I lean, it makes it easy to get that knee up. Fall back. No hand change necessary. And we take it. I'm gonna do it one more time. And we can just start in this figure four. We don't have to do the whole north south thing. I swivel and sit. Lean, bring the shin up, fall back, and we have a nice arm lock from the figure four. One, two, three. I love this technique. I use this technique a lot. Uh, as soon as you get, let me give some fine points on it. As soon as you get a figure four, um, a really good player will try to rip this elbow back down and turn into you. Okay, so just be aware. You want to backstop it with your chest. Some t most of the time that's enough, not always. If you want a little extra security, sometimes you get this, this wrist so that it's harder 
for him to, so I have it, I have it stopped at two, at the, at the beginning and at the back end. Okay. So that's an option for you. I slide my shin in. The top leg, I'd like the toes to be out and the heel in. So this is still a lot of gappage. Right? I want to turn the toes out and the heel in. So the back side of my hamstring is turning his face and I'm leaning on it. So he's pinned for a second. Now, you can either bring your heel out and bring that knee up. Sometimes you're in that position where you got to do that. That's, that's fine. Whatever it takes. <clears throat> Let me do this uh, other side. Yeah. If, you're, if, you're too, if you're too high up here with your knee and you sit down, it's going to be, it's going to be hard. If the foot is up near the head, it's going to be hard to get that shin upright. So think about maybe starting with your knee lower toward the belt line. So as you windshield right and straighten that leg, it's gonna be easier to bring it up. Okay, you gotta work that out for yourself, but don't go too high on the head and then fall into it. So just, uh, those are a couple of details. Try it out with the, try it out with the backstop of your chest. Try it out with this added security from the wrist grab or sonkyo. And really try to get your, it, it helps so much. Stepping up like this is a huge gap. Try to swivel and sit on the side of his head in a nice way and then fall back. Okay, let's keep going. One, two, three. Let's say, oh, that's oh, yeah. uh, let's say we go to this figure four position, but he's grabbing his belt or his gi and you're just like, this is, You've tried, you know, you've tried ripping away from the fingers. You've, you've tried everything. You try surprising him. Um, it's, not, it's not working. You try pushing down with your chest to make you for, force a wrist lock to make him let go. Nothing's working. Okay, that's totally fine. If he doesn't want to give that up, there's a bit of an opportunity to go for a choke. So I'm going to unfurl my leg. I reverse pivot reach around and then go to the neck. Okay. At this point, that little uh, 90 degree bend uh, serves me because I pull on the bicep, pull him back down and then rotate in with my shoulder, the neck, super tight choke. So we're here, oh, this is not working, this is not working. That's okay, don't give up, you just got, you have to move on. Like any relationship with a submission, you have to move on. <laughs> <laughs> open sometimes you can even get you can even start to open the collar before you let go we're here scoop around i should have a curve in my wrist that matches a curve of his neck pull him down maybe you can get it here maybe you can get it here but that's a lot of like i i'm controlling almost none of his body i'm controlling much more if i grab the bicep pull him flat and then rotate my shoulder forward Okay, so one last time. We're here. Oh, this, this isn't working. No, that's, that's totally fine. Come back and get the children, okay? Soft with your partners. One, two, three. One tip that was given to me that really helped my collar chokes, not the, like necessarily the X chokes from the front, but any kind of rear choke is to pop the collar and turn it inside out. So you use your thumb to pop this collar. Now it's easier for me to grip. This, this really is useful. I find people give you different advice. It's totally okay. But I find this slips for me. This isn't, that, this isn't as good of a grip as popping it inside out and then having your fingers notched and going around. So in, in this case, there's also a, a small element of like a blind corner. Like you can't see back here. So that's how I want to enter. When I take this knee off, I want to bring my arm with me so he can't see this coming in. I pop the collar and then feed immediately. Then we can go into our choke. So one, one last time. We're here. Bring everything away. Can't see that arm coming in. Now it's a surprise. And turn that inside out. Make it easy on yourself. And then you have your choke. All right. One, two, three. I
to shoot to shoot. This is one way that I really like to set it up and it kind of combines two really common guards. Okay, and, and it's fairly simple. I use this a lot, okay? Um, so Alex, let me use you. So generally, Alex, if you just step forward into the center with that right leg here, generally people like to do this. In no gi, it's a lot more safe to do this than it is, say, in the gi when you have things to get wrapped up in. There's heaps of ways that people might, you know, initiate guard passing from here. So the Dalahiba guard is, is, a, is a really useful tool. Okay, so I'm just gonna set up a regular one here. Alex can just lower his base down just a little bit here. And guys, what would you guys do um, if you're in Alex's position here? What, what would you what would you be trying to clear? Yeah, exactly. You'd be trying to get yeah, push this down, back step, so on and so forth, and then come back without the hook, stepping back over. There, you go. this is a much better position we to get into. So, generally, I want to keep that okay, that connection. Okay, I actually want to circle my foot back inside. Okay, because whenever I have a hold of my opponent's leg and I have both feet in the middle, I can go to single leg X. Always think of that, okay? Whenever I have two feet in the middle and a grip on the leg, it's very easy for me to bring one leg through, just come in and go straight into single leg X. I, don't, I barely have to change anything. Okay, whether I slide in or whether I hook my opponent in. But, good, I say good, good experience players will be wary of this and they will not let you bring this foot into the center easily. So you have to do something, okay? So this is what I like to do. I like to switch my grip first, okay? And keep pressure with my hamstring, okay? Here like this. Then I'm gonna sit up, put my hand down, shift my weight back and place my shin. It looks like quite a lot, okay? But while your opponent stood up, there's very little they can do as long as you keep that pressure with the hamstring. So just for the first couple of minutes, we're just gonna do this little sequence just to make sure that we all get it and we can get into our shin to shin position before the entry, okay? So here, regular Dalla position. Make sure our feet, our toes are hooked around. This foot, I don't want this foot hanging around too much, okay? If my opponent's fast, they can leg drag this. Okay, this isn't good, okay? Being inside, being here, this is great. Okay, pushing out is also good. Okay, but the sequence we're looking for here. My hand, so I've got a grip on the ankle. I'm gonna switch. Now I can take my hook out, but I keep pressure with my hamstring here, forward. Here I sit up, shift my butt back, and place my shin to shin. Guys, a good shin to shin position. My outside, my outside arms wrapping, I'm not directly in front of my opponent. Okay, this hand can be free to be placed here or here. Okay, everyone see the position. My, my, sh my knee's kind of pointing about uh, 45 degrees here. Okay, one more time. Let's do it from this way. So my opponent steps in, I have my delta position. Okay, this foot, either hide it or keeping it on the inside there. My hand's gonna come in, grip behind the knee, switch that. Now I can let go of his ankle. Okay, I can place my hand on the mat, sit up, shift my butt back, and hit my shin to shin. Okay, guys, anybody got any questions on that? Okay, anyone need to see the sequence again? I'm gonna help you all out anyway. All right, let's just warm up with that and then we'll get right into the entry pretty quickly, okay? Let's do it, three, two, one. We're in this shin to shin position, let's say, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this entry before, but we're just gonna use it, okay, to get into our, our single leg X before I break um, <coughs> Alex down and start attacking his feet, okay? So good shin to shin position. This other foot's inside. I can have this hand out here, exactly like I'd be coming up on a single. This is a great position to come up on a single anyway, okay? Um, so <clears throat> I'm attacking the space in between my opponent's legs, okay? So I wanna make sure that my feet both remain in the le in inside, okay? I don't want any other, I don't want Alex being able to, to change the position by bringing his knee in and, and clearing his foot here. So keep that in mind as you do this entry, okay? From here, I'm gonna fall onto my inside shoulder. I keep the space here, and my aim, I can even add this, add a little jump with my butt for momentum there before I go. Now, here, I roll, and my aim is to bring Alex down into this position. From this position, as I've got contact with the shin, I can elevate it and pull it back in here, into my armpit. See how I maintain this space with my hand, okay? From here, this is gonna allow me to get my knee in and my hips up nice and high. 
with a nice good wrap on Alex's leg here like this. Okay, and say, I'm, I'm sure you guys would have seen this before. All right, I just wanna polish it off for everybody. Okay, so the whole thing here, if I'm in my Delaheva position, my opponents may push me down, stepped inside. Okay, here I need to think about getting both feet inside. Okay, Alex won't just let me circle this in. It's gonna be hard. So I switch, keep the pressure forward with my hand through. This keeps his leg in position. Not too many things he can do here. As I come up, place my hand back, my foot on the floor to shift that foot inside. Bring myself in, hand, I fall onto the inside shoulder, bringing my opponent down, pulling their leg in, wrapping it, keeping this space in between the legs, and my knee comes up. Look how I elevate my butt off the ground, okay? And really bind onto my opponent's legs. Okay, I'm pinching the knees really high up above Alex's knee here, okay? And the foot here is dug right into the hip. It's not just like hovering around here. Make sure you guys' hips are coming right up and I'm binding onto the leg, okay? One more time, let's go through the whole thing. Let's do that this way. So here, I'm in my delta position, okay? Here like, so remember I'm keeping this other foot hidden, okay? I switch my grips, pushing forward with my hamstring, keeping that leg in position while this hand is free so I can sit up, place my foot on the ground and shift back inside. Outside hand comes in, I fall to my inside shoulder, elevating my opponent, pulling that leg in, clearing the space, keeping it and elevating my hips up and binding, okay, above my opponent's knee, really sticking to that leg. You guys got any questions on that one? Okay, so you can start off from the shin to shin position. Once you get comfortable with the entry, maybe let's go through the whole thing, all right? Shout me over if you need me. Let's do it, three, two, one. Okay, so attacking, attacking foot locks. There's plenty, there are ways to do it, but just initially, it's a lot easier to break somebody down to their butt or their hip, okay, to get the finish, just initially. So that's what we're gonna do first and foremost. I'm just gonna run through something that's a little sequence when we're in this um, single leg X position. I'll do the whole thing. Okay. So, guys, a few of you asked about this sequence, okay? And I didn't put that much emphasis on it when I, when I first taught it, because I wanted to get you the switch, okay? But personally, when I do take this leg out, if I am just, this is perfectly legitimate to kind of just chill here with forward pressure. There's not too much Alex to feel comfortable doing here, because I've got, got his ankle, I've got his leg, and I've got forward pressure going in with my hamstring. Then when I'm ready, yes, I switch my leg out and my head back from there, right? Okay, guys, be careful with your head here. Okay, for obvious reasons, we don't want them getting wrapped up. It can be annoying if someone catches a chin strap here. Okay, hand, I elevate to my inside, pulling that leg in. Now, we all know, I'm sure, the basic, the basic breakdown from the single leg X of pointing our knees out. Okay, guys, I'm just going to add a little twist on that for you. Okay, be careful with this one because if you do this with a little bit too much excitement, they can go down with a little bit of a bang. Okay, um, <clears throat> but it's very effective. So when I do turn my outside leg in and I elevate out, Alex is more than likely gonna be stepping around in order to catch his base, you see? As soon as that happens, I keep my foot on the inside, I slide my leg down, I keep the pressure forward, and I'm just gonna turn my hips to the outside, okay? I say when he's moving, generally you get a little bit more, a little bit more air time, okay? Then I'll be in my single leg X position, okay? I'm just gonna do this one a little bit more normally. Okay. Okay, so here, I'm in my, my position, De La Hiva to here, switch my hand to the inside, place my hand back, Guys, remember I mentioned skipping your butt as well? I go for my entry here. Alex catches his base there. Now, scoop his leg out. See, by turning the hips out. So I make him catch his balance. As he's scooping, I just put this leg behind and I scoop it out. Guys, from here, I make sure I get off of my elbow because we need to adjust. We've got to adjust foot locks being on our elbow. So I'm just going to come up in and keep my keep my posture up here okay i said there's lots of different ways lots of little foot feet combinations we're going to start off simple today okay 
I just wanted to get that first sequence done so you know we weren't just starting here all right but everyone finishing in this position because as the person on top all all I'm asking you to do is catch your weight okay so catch your um when the person brings their knees to the outside you're just going to step back step back step back okay they're going to bring that other foot to the outside and hook it out let me show you so here just from the shin to shin regular position i can turn it in and then go out there as he's hopping i scoop him out okay it's very effective yeah from here i can control the secondary leg if i want but i'm going to make sure i get off of this elbow and just coming up into this foot locking position okay guys just mind mind your space as well okay for people do tend to flop down at a little bit of speed here and remember your brake force okay three two one so we're in this position guys generally when i say when i say with foot locking like i mean straight foot locking right just a few details on it we are always generally okay in terms of a linear straight foot lock you do have rotating ones so on and so forth but we're talking just in our basic basic techniques we're attacking the metatarsals these are these small bones okay running from the foot here we can also like take the kind of ankle ligaments into that equation too so anything from kind of here to there meaning that our grip on the foot needs to be pretty precise okay i always say to my students that whenever um there's two things that are needed for for, for a good straight foot lock okay position on the foot i.e where you wrap the foot and then tension on the leg or the hip okay so <clears throat> we're in our foot locking position let's just say i'm very high at the moment i'm nowhere near where i need to be bear in mind i've mentioned the metatarsals they're all the way back here Guys, shifting up, up, back is common practice. I feel like to be shifting and doing that. You don't need to, okay? If I just keep a good solid grip, but not too hard, okay? I'm not holding the leg too hard because his foot's gonna get stuck. If Alex tries to pull his foot out, it's still gonna get stuck. And this gets, this is a pen thing for me. Now I'm in position, okay? He's, he's done it for me. So bear that in mind. You don't need to be holding onto the leg like, Ooh. people have a tendency everybody don't worry everybody does this it's like guillotines with foot locks when people get them they're like <sighs> foaming at the mouth to finish them all right don't be like that don't be like that okay you know don't be trying to wrap it too hard it'll work against you i promise one other thing to remember look at my elbow it's out okay my forearm's perpendicular to alex's shin bone here okay so all i'm gonna do bear in mind i'm holding it lightly i'm just gonna move slide backwards slide backwards until I feel those metal tarsals hit the back of my armpit. Look again, here, see I'm way up his leg, I'm right on his calf here. Watch as I slide. I'm not shifting my butt. See how little movement I need to do. Now, that stops, it plugs itself, okay? So once I get here, I know I need to adjust. Hands all the way through and all the way up to the chin. Look how I bring my, I don't just let them relax here, I pull them up to my chin. From here, my elbow does something I like to call a chicken wing. I just do this. And see there, that will already put pressure on Alex's legs. Now, I don't just want to hip in. I can probably finish it here. I actually want to pull my heels into my butt and jump up there. Now, from here, it's just a small amount of hip. Okay? And that takes me <clears throat> like 5 10% of my power and my squeeze. Okay? When you drill this, Guys, really try and, if you're having to use any power at all, something's wrong, the position's wrong, okay? So just call me over and I'll help you out, okay? I want you all to start in a high kind of wrap position because it's this adjustment which is the, the valuable piece of this technique. I'm sure you all know how to finish once you get on it, okay? Remember, that forearm perpendicular, not hugging that leg too tight because it's gonna plug anyway. I lean, I just move myself back, you see? See how it's sliding? Now I can't slide anymore. This is how I know it's good. <clears throat> all the way through, all the way up. Watch my elbow. It pulls around my back. I pull my heels into my butt. And I just slow yeah. hip. I think I have all of this left to go. Even that's just sh like linear and straight. Okay? As I say, it's the adjustment here, which is the, the really valuable part of this technique. Okay? The feet configuration, the angle, 
where I'm, where I am, whether I'm on my side or on like either side or on my belly, doesn't matter as much. We can bring those different things in easily once we get this adjustment. Okay, guys, need to see one more time. Yeah, one more time. Okay, so we've got this regular single leg X position. We can all start here, guys. I really want to make sure that all of your arms are perpendicular. Okay, so 90 degrees to your opponent's shin bone as much as they can by keeping that elbow out. Okay, now as I slide, I just shift back. I keep this elbow out. I'm just, sorry, don't shift back. I just slowly fall back until I feel it plug, until I can't fall back anymore. Now I know that I'm in this position. If I look down, I'll sp start seeing the top of my of Alex's foot, or your partner's foot here. I pull all the way through, all the way up, like I would with a guillotine. Watch again all the way through, all the way up. Now I'm in position for my chicken wing. My elbow goes behind the back. I just gently pull my heels into my butt. There. Slowly hit down the cup, okay? Very, very little power or effort when you're drilling these, okay? Get the position right and it, will, it won't take very much. Guys, you got any questions? Uh, can we see the hand position? Yeah, absolutely. So the hand position, again, focusing on keeping that elbow out just like a regular guillotine for this one, okay? So once I get that position on the neck tarsal, I feel it in my armpit there, all the way through, all the way up. Bring those shoulders up as well, then the chicken wing, there, okay? Bring those heels into the butt, and then slowly hip, okay? And say, we'll add angles, we'll add different foot configuration, but the position on the foot and tension on the legs all you need. Three, two, one. But this is a this is like an old technique that's been lost. Okay, this technique called a toe press. It's kind of a, a precursor to a toe hold, and it has plenty of use in, in the modern leg locking game. I use this an awful lot, and this grip is very very threatening. As you can tell by the name, it's quite similar to a toe hold. Similar but different. And you're going to see how these two can be used in combination. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm in the same position. Maybe I'm too high. Okay, maybe I don't feel like I can adjust, all right, and I'm very far up the leg. Okay, guys, I'm not, all I'm gonna do is hold on to my own leg because, guys, tell me, what do you think is Alex's, you know, main way out? What is a way out here? He's gonna try and peel this off, okay? So then he's gonna try and step over it, exactly. And then we're into a bit more of a, <clears throat> a position where he can count me. Guys, I'm gonna do something quite simple. Making sure I go around my own leg, I hold on to my own leg here, okay? Try and get out of this position now. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah? It's just held, it's just held on. This gives me the time I need to switch back. All I'm gonna do is take my hand on the outside and switch back. My thumb's gonna go underneath the ball of the foot here. Okay? My um my middle finger, okay, is gonna be going underneath the knuckle of the pinky toe. And I'm gonna squeeze his toes together like I'm trying to give one of those really strong handshakes, you know, on his toes. Alright, so here. Thumb underneath the ball of the foot, middle finger underneath the pinky toe, and I'm gonna squeeze, okay? From here, I'm gonna activate. What I mean by activate, I'm gonna start pushing it down to the floor, okay? See how that brings my elbow behind me, okay? Guys, I wanna fall onto my shoulder here. When I keep that pressure as I fall, I'm gonna fall onto my shoulder. From here, I can let go of this. I'm gonna keep this pressure forward, bring my heels into my butt, and hit through in order to get that push. It's the same feeling, okay, as the straight foot lock should be, okay? It's a very, very strong um, finished position. Um, it's this completely legal, completely legal at all belt levels. So technically a straight foot lock, okay? People don't expect this, don't see this coming, all right? And they don't feel threatened when you just put one hand on the foot like this. They're like, oh, are you going for a toe hold? You know, he knows he can't do that, right? Especially like a white belt, a blue belt and things like that. But this is all you need. Okay, so I'm high up that leg. I hold the foot so he can't take it off. This also stops him from countering me on this foot. Okay, my hand comes out. Remember the thumb underneath the ball of the, the big toe. Okay, the ball of the foot, there. And then the middle finger around the knuckle and I squeeze. I then activate by pushing down, bringing my elbow behind me. I fall onto my shoulder. Once my shoulder hits, I can let go. I keep that pressure pushing in, pull my heels into my butt, and I start hip. Down. Okay, guys, he's tapping here. I have all of this left. Okay, it's a lot. Okay, 
It's a lot of, uh, and it's very, very simple. There's not too many steps for that. Guys, as well, <coughs> it sort of could prompt my opponent to do what do you think? Knowing whether this is a little bit more of a, you know, we're taking this position a step further. When Alex knows that I'm going to be trying to turn to the full to this outside, where do you think he's going to turn? He's probably going to turn his hips this way. Guys, like this, again, this will start giving me toe holds, all right? Heel hooks, okay, and knee butts, okay? So it's very, very useful just as a threat to develop other positions and just on its own, okay? Um, guys, give that, give that a go. Um, make sure that you're keeping that pressure pushed down, okay? Make sure we're falling onto our shoulders, not our elbows, okay? We're pulling our heels into our butt and then we're hipping as we're pushing that foot, okay? It goes nice and slowly because it comes on quick, okay? Let's do it, three, two, one. This, this is a little drill here for us, okay? We can explore a, different, like a couple of different positions just in one drill. Okay, as I said, leg walking is you kind of it's pretty much like any other position really. Like we developed a roadmap for our guard passing. Maybe we like to, you know, go to half guard and then switch over and cut the knee. You know, we understand all those little points and stops. Leg locking is the same thing. All right, knowing that you where and where and um, how you can switch between the positions is invaluable. Okay, because then you'll start seeing your counters. All right, you'll start seeing your attacks before your opponent, and that's the key, right? So, guys, we're gonna make a switch, okay, to the 50-50 position here, all right? I'm in a good position here, all right? I'm in, a, I'm in a position where I can't be countered. I can't be countered, but the counters are fairly weak in the single leg X position. As soon as I extract this leg, okay, I've now entered a position which is, you know, counterable, because Alex has my leg in between. Okay, so I need to be careful with how and how I do this. All right, so extracting my leg first and foremost, I like to just bring this one out and keep my feet here. Now I'm kind of, <clears throat> I can think about it a little bit more. I can still attack the feet and I don't have the inside leg switched here. It's very important that we don't offer the leg in between our opponent's leg to be countered. Okay, because how would Alex do you think counter my leg here if I left it locked up this way? He would heel hook me, exactly. He's gonna pull this in, he's gonna throw this leg over, and there's the heel hook, okay? So I need to be careful how I extract. So I'm gonna to go to a position called double outside, all right? So regular single leg X here, okay? I'm gonna take this leg out, and I'm gonna throw it over the top here, but I'm gonna make sure that this inside leg's covered, all right? From here, I've got a good wrap of the leg, and I'm gonna dive underneath, and I'm gonna just lean back, and I'm gonna grab his leg like I'm eating a burger, okay? Like a big, big juicy burger, okay? From here, I'm gonna pass it across, all right? And now I'm in my 50-50 position, okay? Watch again, guys. Do this on the other side here. So, here, okay? Regular position. I take this leg out, but I don't wanna leave it on top, remember? I don't wanna leave this on top. So I switch it. I want to be very careful as I switch here as well, because I don't want Alex being able to pull this leg behind him. All right, because if he does this and he comes up, he's actually in a leg drag position. If he gets this knee, this foot going behind here like this, this is not a good position for me. Okay, if he starts getting this knee down to the floor, terrible, terrible position for me. Okay, so be aware of this. Also, again, just don't let that foot, remember this can be counted, it's in between Alex's leg there, okay? So I've switched it to the outside. I underhook, I go back like I'm eating that burger, remember? Then I force that bend in the leg, here like this. From here, I'm in 50-50, okay? Guys, I'm gonna show you um, a couple of ways to heel hook in this position, okay? So, two ways, actually, okay? First way. First way, I'm gonna turn my knee out, okay? What I mean by this, so 50-50 is 50-50 by nature. We and Alex and I are pretty much in the same position, especially if Alex locks up his feet here, okay? We're both in a position, we're in exactly the same position, hence the name 50-50. Now, I need to break his feet apart in order to do my heel hook attack. So how I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna take two C grips, okay? 
My secret, I'm going to take put the, the secret that's on the inside side, I'm going to put it on the inside of the top leg. The secondary one, I'm going to place here in the gap, just on his calf on the other one there, okay? It should be, you wouldn't cross them over, so it's the most comfortable feeling one if, if you're a bit unsure. Now, how I'm going to separate the legs? I'm just going to do a shrimp. Simultaneously, I turn my knee out. Okay, what I mean by that is, guys, my knee is now down on the floor here. My femur's down flat on the floor. If I leave it inside, Alex can counter me for the heel hook. Even if this leg is open now, as long as this femur's down on the ground, he doesn't have a heel hook here. He doesn't have my knee line. Okay, so let's just look at this again. See, guys. Put my foot on the floor. Big shrimp, turn that knee down. You see that knee's out the hole. Okay? All right, let's go through all of this. Appreciate this a little bit much. Okay, all at once, but I'm sure you guys can do this. Yeah? Double outside. Be careful not to put this one on top, because we'll get countered. Switch it. Here, yeah? I get my underhook, I go to my burger eating position. I force bend in the leg. Alex can lock up here. Now we're in 50-50. Of course, if he doesn't lock up, I can just rotate my knee straight out and start attacking the position. I want you guys to practice this. Two C grips. One, two. Foot on the floor. Big butt shift as I turn my knee out. Okay? Guys, we'll get into the heel hook right after. I just want you guys to do this a little bit. Okay? Guys, any questions on that? So this is an inside heel hook that we're getting to? This is an inside heel hook from the 50-50 position, yeah. And you've, you've explored two, two, posi two other positions there, okay? Because you've gone from single leg X to double outside. You've gone to that burger eating position, which is a very useful control position when the leg's straight, okay? Because when that leg's straight, we mentioned the knee line, okay? So a knee line is where my knee has to be past my opponent, the line of my opponent's knees. This makes it the difference between an effective and an ineffective leg locking position, right? When that leg's straight, it's hard to hold onto the knee line. That's how we clear the knee line with a straight leg. So that's why we go to that burger eating position with two hands on it. Stops that knee line being cleared. All right, guys, let's give this a try. I'm gonna help you out if you need help. Just, just please just shout me over, okay? Three, two, one. Okay, so guys, inside heel hooks, okay? Guys, again, heel hooking, it's the same as any other joint lock as long as it's practiced safely. Okay, heel hooks more than any other submission are the responsibility of the person applying them in order to not, not cause injury. It's not the person's responsibility who's defending to keep themselves safe. Okay, it's the person that's applying the locks. Very important to recognize that, okay? Because it's the only position where pain comes after the break. Okay, for example, like when we're in, a, when we're in an armbar, when we're in a kimura, when we're in a straight foot lock even, hurts like hell before it snaps, okay? Rotational force applied or hips, like in a sideways motion and lateral motion to the knee, you don't get that. It just goes crack, 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 and then out, okay? So the out comes after, which makes it like a little bit more dangerous. So I always emphasize the point of the person who's applying it when we're training. If my, if, if my opponent's like, like <clears throat> moving in, in like strange ways, Okay, I'm not going to hold the submission, okay? Because it's like, like you, can, you can cause injury by holding a submission. They can injure themselves, for example, if they spin the wrong way. Okay, now that we've got through that, okay, Alex is locked up. I do my C-grip break. One, two, foot on the ground, big shift. Now, I'm going to pull this up in and circle my forearm underneath. Watch again, here. I can base down on the floor here, but all I'm going to do is pull this up then my arm can sit and rest on it there, okay? However we do this, I, what I don't want to do is lift it and turn my knee inside, okay? okay? Now I'm available for a counter, I'm not here, okay? Well, there is a counter here, but it's a toe hold, not a, not a heel hook, okay? So here, I know I said don't be on your elbow, but just for this, I'm gonna lift this up into my armpit, and then I'm gonna roll my forearm underneath. Notice how here, there's no space. Okay, it's all of my body weight that's compressed on top. Okay, guys, this is not a rotational finish. 
It can be, but it doesn't need to be, okay? Notice how there's no space, okay? I'm gonna get to my butterfly grip, so grip my wrists, and then I'm gonna start bringing my nose down to the ground. As I bring my nose down to the ground, I get my hips come up, my armpit goes behind me, yeah. and my hips come through. It's very subtle to finish, okay? When I say my, I bring my armpit into my buttocks, right? And then I hip forward there. You won't need any of that, okay? You won't need 10% of that, all right? It's just a little bit difficult to show because it's so subtle. So here, I've separated Alex's legs, which you've all done already, okay? I'm gonna pull this up and just roll this under. You see? Pull it right up and I just circle this underneath so there's no space. My chest comes down as I gain my grips here. My nose comes down to the mat. This brings my hips up. Look, I start getting up on that knee. This allows my armpit yep. to come underneath and it allows me to bring my hips forward through the knee. So there's no rotation. One more time. Yeah? My nose down to the mat. You'll feel those hips coming up. That armpit goes. All good, Alex? Yeah, tap. Yeah, yeah, good. All right. Sorry, but Alex, where are you feeling that? It's, I'm, I'm feeling it here mostly. Yeah. And it, it's subtle, it doesn't hurt, but it feels unnatural. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. It's, it, it won't hurt, it'll just feel odd. And then it always. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's a, it's a feeling that is very like, as I said, we're all, we're all grappling, you know? It's always better the devil you know in these positions, you know? I encourage you to get familiar with them, okay? Um, guys, uh, any questions? And um, we'll do a little bit of, like we'll do a five minute, I'll ask you guys to think if you have any questions, but any questions on that technique? No, nope, let's give it a try. Just from that 50-50 position, let's do it, three, two, one. Okay.